Hi everyone, I'm Lacey from Sigma America, and this is the first in our Sigma University student Q&A series, where we'll be talking with student photographers and filmmakers who have found their calling in the visual arts, and along the way, put some of our gear to good use in making their visions come to life. For more information on how Sigma America supports education in these fields, and to learn about student discounts on Sigma lenses and cameras, you can check out sigma-university.com or visit us on at Sigma University on Instagram. So now I'd like to welcome Justin Steele. Justin is the winner of the recent Sigma 60th Anniversary Scholarship Contest in the Precision Filmmaking category. Congratulations, Justin. He is a student at the Savannah College of Art and Design, majoring in film and television. Before we start this interview, let's take a look at his winning piece. Making pizzas it's kind of poetic in a sense. People think, oh, it's just making pizza, but it actually requires a pretty high skill set, a lot of practice. I mean, everything from making the dough to stretching it to baking in the oven, it's all, it's all kind of like exotic in its own way. It's like one of those things that takes so much practice, but once you get it down, like you get in your rhythm, it's just, it's awesome. There's, like, there's nothing like it. Especially like firing up the oven, baking a pie at 850 degrees and rotating and cooking it in 60 seconds. I mean, once you pull that pie out and it's perfect and you nail it, I mean, there's no better feeling. So first, let's let's talk about your winning piece in general. So kind of what guided you towards precision as your topic, and then what then brought you to this subject that you wanted to film? Sure, yeah. Um, so I've known Kyle, who's the owner of Pizzeria Vittoria, for a couple years. Um, and we had already been kind of, you know, talking about doing something together, um, mostly because as of last year, uh, his place, Pizzeria Vittoria, was voted best pizza in the state of Georgia by Food and Wine magazine. Um, and so we kind of already knew that we wanted to do something together. And then I saw uh, the Sigma contest either on Twitter or Instagram, I can't remember which one, um, and then saw the categories. And just through having conversations with Kyle and him talking about, you know, the places that he traveled and how much work goes into each pizza, you know, through his perspective, um, for me, it was a no brainer. So really, as like a, a documentary filmmaker, you let the subject guide you. A hundred percent. Yeah, for sure. And I think, too, like taking into context that, you know, Sigma is a lens company immediately, you know, and creatively through lens choices. I'm sure we'll get there in a minute. Uh, but my mind was already seeing the shots, um, you know, using a shallower depth of field to highlight certain aspects of the craft. And to me, uh, like I said, it was a perfect, perfect subject um, and uh, a perfect category to enter. So I believe for this piece, you had a 35 millimeter uh, Sigma Sitting Prime lens, correct? Correct, yeah. Okay. Um, I knew basically based on the format of how we were gonna be shooting it, um, that he was gonna be making three pizzas and we weren't gonna necessarily, I didn't wanna interrupt his flow so much. So I knew that it was gonna be, you know, we were gonna get it all in one take as much as possible. Um, and so with that in mind, you know, there wasn't going to be an opportunity for lens changes. So um, even though the 50 is the first thing that would come to mind for me um, for this type of shoot because of the fine detail, um, I knew that the 50 would be too tight based on this, his working space. Um, so I knew I wanted to go a little bit wider, but I was confident um, with the aperture of the 1.5 that we'd also on tight shots be able to get that nice shallow depth of field. Yeah, I mean, that's always important, right? I mean, not only does the focal length tell part of the story, you need to be aware of the environment that you're in. Filmmaking is so artistic and technical at the same time. 100%. You know, were you one of those people that very early on you knew, like, I'm going into filmmaking, I'm going to be a filmmaker, or did that come kind of later in life for you? Much later, for sure. Uh, I think that my earliest passion was always music. Um, and the first time I ever even thought about picking up a camera um, was maybe around 2017, like, if I had to guess. I was living in Vegas at the time and there were all these really cool um, basically like event recap videos that these editors were doing that were traveling around with different artists, particularly in the, the electronic music scene. 
Um, and I just love the, the, the fast paced editing and the dynamic shot styles of it. Um, and so it's interesting because it was always music. I thought, you know, that was my biggest inspiration, but then the second that I found a way to, you know, uh, use film or a different medium to capture things in music, that's, that was my first inspiration. And from there, what led you to the Savannah College of Art and Design? Sure. Um, so actually, my wife ended up getting a job. We lived in Vegas long enough um, and we were ready for a change. And I actually hadn't heard of, of SCAD um, until I just you know, started looking around for schools because I had started my education in film while I was living in Vegas. Um, I was in the military previously. And so I had four years of free school, um, just wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So again, inspired by film, I thought that was the best use for that. But once we moved out here, looked around at schools, it turned out that SCAD has a, has a great program. It's a great school. Um, and then it was just, again, a no-brainer for me. Okay. So, so being at this college now, you know, you had some, some experience prior to going to school, but what's something that your teachers have, have taught you or, um, you know, put on you that you never would have thought of before, that you only could have gotten had you come here? Sure. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, it's, a, it's basically a sense of, of community, um, not only in the way um, that they're huge on, and you inevitably you know, run into it yourself, but creating strong teams with strong communication. Uh, the mm -hmm. type of work that I was doing previously was just me, right? You're a run and gun like filmmaker, you're shooting everything, you're editing everything, you're making all your own decisions, like you're relying on yourself. Um, so what being at film school has taught me, um, is collaboration and the different types of projects that you'll actually be able to undertake when, or once you get collaboration involved, uh, it's just way more than you could ever do by yourself. Okay. What's, what's maybe some advice, uh, that you would give some, some either students that are just starting in film school or maybe students that are considering going into film school. Um, do you have anything that you would think that that kind of really puts that that foot forward, really puts them ahead? Definitely. I think it's about getting on as many sets as possible. Um, there's classroom instruction. And especially when you go to a four year school like the Savannah College of Art and Design, you're going to be taking a lot of like gen ed classes. that are going to pull you away from just the production courses um, of film. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't try and get on a set every weekend. Um, because again, like I talked about before, that sense of community um, is you can foster it early on um, and you can work with some people and say, okay, cool. I didn't really like the way they did things or maybe we don't communicate well together. And ideally by your sophomore, maybe early or junior year, you have a rock solid team and you guys are already starting to make great films. So that by the time you get to your thesis, your senior year, you're ready, you're ready to knock it out of the park. Like, are there any particular films, filmmakers that kind of have inspired you through the years? Anyone that you can think of that you point to that you're like, that's when I noticed filmmaking, not just watching a movie, but I noticed filmmaking. Sure. So growing up, uh, my parents weren't huge movie watchers. So, you know, you, you just watch it by the trailer or maybe the title, right? Like going to select like a bottle of wine for most people is really just <laughs> looking at who has the coolest label. Um, but uh, I, I think... That I kind of reverse engineered it once I started going to film school. I started looking up movies that I really, really liked and then eventually noticed a theme that there was one director and it was David Fincher for me. Um, his kind of, his style and his approach to filmmaking feels almost very militaristic with his minimalized, uh, like rarely ever using any handheld. Um, everything is very deliberate in the way that it moves, uh, you know, the way that he's not you know, keen on holding the audience's hand to get them from point A to point B. Um, I noticed similar things with Denis Villeneuve, right? Um, who's just knocking it out of the park right now. Um, but again, his movies, his style, those are things that have always like inspired me in the narrative filmmaking space. You said that you come from a military background. So you, right. you understand that level of structure that's needed. Um, so can you, while we're on that subject, can you kind of talk about um, that transition going from kind of like that military structure into like a, like a film school and artistic structure? I mean, it's very different, um, but it's not uncommon, you know? Yeah, no, it is very different. Fortunately, I had like a couple year um, buffer where I got out of the military and then was uh, in the fitness space full time. So I was training people full time um, whenever I first found those edits like we talked about earlier in the interview that were on Instagram of those post event, you know, kind of recaps. Um, and so 
I wouldn't say like film is a little bit different. I think film students aren't necessarily like the students that come to art school to paint, right? I think that there is an already kind of like a more like, I don't know if mechanical is the right word, but like, you know, there's, there's more kind of film, so much of filmmaking, uh, especially in, in the grip positions and, you know, production assistants and stuff like that is long hours, right? Like moving equipment from point A to point B, tons of scheduling, tons of preparation, right? Um, and it's just so much different than a lot of the other majors uh, here. So I guess, you know, as far as switching my train of thought it, uh, from a militaristic point of view to like just general art that may seem challenging, but there were a lot of things, like I said, similar in, in filmmaking that kind of just click. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense to me because I feel like, especially with set life, you have to do it for a while and people find out very quick. You are either built for it or you're not. Like you, right. you have that structure or you don't. Let's talk about, you know, motivation and inspiration. I think it's very common, especially for students that you want to go running, right? Like you're ready to go. You're ready to create. You're ready to make your film. And sometimes you do. And sometimes you might be disappointed with the outcome or you hit that wall where you just think, I, you know, I've run out of ideas. I'll, I'll never come up with a new idea ever again. Um, and so I'm curious from your perspective, when those moments happen, when you're looking for that motivation or that inspiration to, to create and to keep going, where do you kind of like naturally gear yourself towards? Yeah, I'm a big believer that motivation isn't real. Um, <laughs> I think that anytime we start something new, we're actually just freshly inspired by something. And then so motivation is our, the byproduct, right, of that. I'm very motivated to go out and do this. But, you know, anybody that's done anything for an extended period of time knows that that motivation disappears, right? And what should take its place is balance and structure, right? So as far as being motivated to do things, it's as simple as, you know, creating a, a, you know, a schedule. Um, and even if part of that schedule is just finding time to be inspired, they kind of go hand in hand. Um, but, you know, I think that as far as strictly the inspiration aspect, I think you just have to let it come to you. I don't know that you can like pick up a spear and go hunting for inspiration, right? Like yeah. you have to um, read, right? And not expect to get anything out of it. You have to sit down and watch a film and not think about your letterboxed review the entire time that you're going to leave, right? It's just about simply like being, and that's really tough for us, but I think it's necessary. And so I'm curious, so when you entered the Sigma 60 uh, scholarship, you know, when you first saw it, as you mentioned, kind of on social media, what then did you see from that, that you were like, I can do this. I can absolutely do this. Yeah. Um, I think it just really comes down to, you know, I mean, I'm going to be cliche here, but you miss hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Right. Um, and so, you know, being such a big fan of Sigma's products um, for as long as I have been, the second that I saw that this contest was even a thing, I'm like, okay, I've got to, I've got to give it a shot. Um, and I think especially what gave me even more confidence was that there were so many, there were, you know, four different categories to enter. And I thought that that was really interesting because it wasn't just like make a film, submit it to us. We'll see if it's good. You know what I mean? It's like, you have four different options here. And I thought that was really cool because it was, you got to tailor, you know, kind of fit your subject and your approach. Um, and so in regards to this competition specifically, um, that's where, you know, more confidence came from. Now that we've talked about, you know, you and this competition, uh, where you were as a student, let's look at the the future. You know, where do you see yourself um, either in five years or even in the next year or just overall, do you have that kind of like end goal that you're looking for or are you kind of taking that project by project? Sure. Yeah. I, you know, I think for the longest time for me, it was always about financial stability. I was like, if I'm going to stop doing this fitness thing and I'm going to go for the film thing, like what's going to pay me the most? And that's, you know, that's kind of like taboo to say, I feel like. You know, because so many people, you know, it's at the end of the day, there's the idea of like, there's a romantic sense of like the art comes first. Um, but I do think that certain people, if you were only concerned about that, you'd have to, you'd be in a pretty privileged position. Like at the end of the day, we all have to have to pay bills. So with that being said, I think that like, you know, the commercial and music video space is something that has interested me from the beginning, but because film school is so like, tailored towards preparing you for narrative filmmaking, I found a real passion for doing that as well. So, you know, I'm shooting my senior thesis this quarter. 
Um, it's a narrative slash music video hybrid, um, which I feel is, you know, perfect. And, and we'll just see, you know, how it all, it, it all comes together. But um, as far as the five year timeline, um, you know, Savannah now, Atlanta's a couple hours up the road. Um, so could potentially see myself in Atlanta doing maybe commercial and music video. And who knows, maybe some narrative on the side. If you had that one person to approach you to say, hey, I want you to work on this project with me, or if it's like a specific type of project. Um, I know we were just talking about the, the make anything uh, aspect, but for you, if someone were, you know, what would be kind of like that amazing, that amazing moment for you? That's so interesting. You know, I wouldn't say that like I'm there yet. I, you know, uh, of knowing exactly like what that, that specific project would be. Um, but I think what I'm noticing is that I find that it's like certain creators that I, that are here at school are, you know, that, that the potential of like finding someone on Instagram that you really admire their work. I think it's the idea of like, Hey, I, I like your work. You know, you like mine, let's just get in a room together and just see like what we come up with. Um, and so I would say that's, that's where I'm at right now. Nothing specific, but you know, that's, that's very respectable to, to know, you know, where your level is at and where you can continue to grow. Um, and I think that there's a big thing with, with working with people who are open to collaboration. I think that's, um, you know, absolutely essential. And I could see how that would be important for the future. Uh, Justin, thank you so much for participating in the Sigma 60th anniversary contest. We hope that the scholarship winnings will help you along your way. And we hope that your generation can continue to encourage and inspire filmmakers for years to come. It is an art form that we at Sigma are, of course, very attached to, but we hope it'll keep evolving and growing and that talented artists like yourself will keep it alive for a long time. And Justin, if people want to follow you on social media, where can they find you? Yeah, on all platforms, it's going to be at NXLens, I-N-E-X-L-E-N-S. Okay, great. So again, thank you so much for your time and thank you to everyone for watching. Please visit us at sigma-university.com or at Sigma University on Instagram.